S1 that is S wave in lead 1, Q3 that is Q wave in lead 3 and T3, T inversion in lead 3. That is the S1, Q3, T3 pattern on ECG in pulmonary embolism. That's very popular. Most of us know that from early part of our career because it is taught every often. S1, Q3, T3 pattern in pulmonary embolism. But please note that this is not the commonest pattern in pulmonary embolism. This is seen sometimes but not always. Commonest is of course sinus tachycardia. That's seen here also. There is sinus tachycardia here also. And uh, some may have evidence of right ventricular ischemia and dysfunction which may be sometimes manifest as T inversion and D deletes. Here T inversion is seen only in V1 but can be seen sometimes in V1, V2, V3. Here V3 there is T inversion. And if this is more prominent and if the person presents with chest pain, it may be thought of as anterior wall ischemia, coronary artery disease. Sometimes, especially in females, that may be uh, a differential diagnosis because in females, chest pain need not be due to myocardial ischemia. It could be pulmonary embolism. You have to be very careful about that. And whenever there is doubt, best way is to get a CT pulmonary angiogram even though echo may show evidence of right ventricular overload, pulmonary artery dilatation, increased pulmonary arterial pressure and very rarely embolus in transit through the right heart system. That's extremely rare. So this is not the commonest pattern in pulmonary embolism. Then there could be Incomplete RBB pattern. Here it is not there. Incomplete RBBB pattern, RSR pattern in V1 can occur in pulmonary embolism. Similarly, right axis deviation can also occur. Here there is rightward axis. It's not typically right axis deviation, but uh, a deep pass in lead 1 can indicate right axis deviation. These are the ECG features of acute pulmonary embolism. This is a contrast enhanced CT thorax showing thrombus in the pulmonary artery as a negative shadow. Even if you see typical clinical features of pulmonary embolism and ECG changes, thrombus need not be extensive. By the time CT is taken, sometimes thrombus may get partially dissolved and uh, migrate peripherally and only small vessels may be involved.